So there was actually some really interesting news that was only published a few hours ago. So this is going to be an interesting one because this is news that you might not have heard. But let's get into all the details for today's summary on the last few days on AI. So one of the things that I actually did cover before was, of course, Sakana AI towards fully automated, open ended scientific discovery. So this was something that was pretty insane because what this kind of was that we're moving towards this recursive self-improvement area where we've got systems that can literally, you know, do research on AI with current models. So basically an AI does more research, the AI improves and the improved AI does better research, which can improve itself even faster. And of course, that's the entire cycle. So essentially, and I'm, I know I know that I made a video on this as well. And there's going to be a reason why I'm actually bringing this up again, because usually I don't cover stories twice, but I'm going to talk about why. So it says we're excited to introduce the AI scientists, the first comprehensive system. So fully automatic scientific discovery. And this enables foundation models such as LLMs to perform research independently. So this is pretty crazy because if you can have LLMs performing research independently, of course, there's the theory that you're just going to be able to, you know, have these LLMs like one here, one here, one here, you know, instances of these LLMs and all generating papers, you know, paper, 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 paper. And then, of course, from that, you're going to essentially have this, you know, area where rather than there be, you know, even though that like right now there is just, you know, a flood of papers flooding Arxiv, like literally the, the number of papers that have, you know, been published to Arxiv has just, it's literally gone up like this in a graph, like it's it's actually pretty crazy. But I mean, when we have, you know, actual AI scientists automating that, I mean, the graph is going to literally just go straight up into the sky because the amount of research that's going to get done is going to just be like, it's probably going to be a new paper every, you know, hour or every second. I mean, how crazy is that going to be? You know, once we have, you know, systems that are efficient, once they are fast, once they are scalable, I mean, um, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be really, really crazy. But um, the methodology is here. You can see that they've got, you know, this entire methodology where, you know, generate a plan, novelty check. And this is basically where they check that the idea hasn't been done before. They, they score the idea. They've got the experiments, all of this stuff right here. Then, of course, at the end, they've got the LLM paper reviewing. So they've got this comprehensive process on how they, you know, work through from the start to finish. And I think like overall, what we're going to see here is probably going to see like this thing being built on top on because once again, like I said in the previous video, this is something that is, you know, open source. So if you want to experiment with this, this is going to be something that you can do. So I'm wondering if other people and other organizations are probably going to, you know, be building on top of this. Of course, they spoke about, you know, the bloopers and the future implications. So the crazy thing about this as well, and this is kind of like, a, you know, the juicy thing here. And of course, this one, you know, the research, it wasn't like, you know, groundbreaking, you know, breaking news and stuff like that, because, you know, these LLMs can only conduct you know, essentially preliminary research. But the craziest thing about this, okay, was that there was a leak, okay? And I say leak because it's not really a leak, but there was like, you know, um, some screenshots about, you know, some open open AI subdomains. Um, and I'm going to show you guys that now because I wanted to talk about this, but I didn't have the opportunity to because I didn't just want to like, you know, just put it randomly in a video, but I found the, you know, time now. And essentially what we can see here is that we have this, okay? So you can see here, and this is Jimmy Apples that tweeted this on, you know, August the 13th, 2024. Um, and this is not news that's very, very recent that comes later in the video. But you can see here, he says, in a way, this trolling is rather funny. It puts OpenAI in an awkward spot with all these expectations and having to balance between patience and hype. Um, and of course, he tweets um, some stuff here. But essentially what we can see here is that this is some internal OpenAI links. And you can see it says, okay, it says scientistinternal.openai.org. Now, what we can see here is that these dates are, you know, quite old. You can see that some of these dates are from, you know, literally March. Some of them are literally from January. Um, and Jimmy Apples tweeted this again. Now, I think he tweeted this because, of course, you know, maybe they're working on, you know, internal scientists. Are they working on internal assistant scientists? Are they working on, you know, the, the, like a leaderboard to see like how good these scientists are? Is this something that is going to be worked on, you know, continuously? I'm not entirely sure, but I do think that this, you know, shows us that, you know, this kind of thing is, of course, going to be worked on in the future. OpenAI is like extremely secretive. And what we do know is that like with current models, we're always essentially two years behind. And the fact that like they could have a finished product right now, 
but we're probably going to get it, you know, like at least 18 months in advance, not 18 months in advance, but I mean, 18 months in terms of a delay, because of course you've got to do things like safety testing. You've got to do things like, you know, red teaming. You've got to do things like post training and all these other things that, you know, involve making an AI system. And not only that, OpenAI also makes these into products as well. So OpenAI is not just like, okay, we've made this huge model. Here it is. They actually make this into, you know, their product, like Open, OpenAI is, you know, a product driven company. It's not just a research organization although that is a large part of what they do. Um, a lot of people do forget that this company is a product-based company. That's why ChatGPT is so nice to use. The UI is really nice. But the point here is that, you know, this is going to be some stuff that does happen. Now, I do want to say here that I don't know if this is correct when I said the dates before, because I do know that Americans, they do swap the dates around. But yeah, as I was saying, considering the fact that I actually did just get this wrong, apologies, you know, I usually don't get things wrong, but um, we can see that these dates are actually current dates. So this is actually updated recently. So what I meant to say is that, you know, it seems like OpenAI is probably working on this now. So they're probably, okay, you know, just from the links, of course, links don't really mean anything. You don't really want to be doing too much speculation, but, you know, a scientist internal, um, a health scientist internal, and, you know, an assistant API scientist. I mean, these could potentially be things like a health scientist. We do know that, you know, uh, LLMs, you know, they have a really, really effective time at, you know, diagnosing health conditions and providing that kind of support. And of course, them recently, we've seen with that research, we've seen that they're they've been doing, you know, amazing stuff there. And if you want to know about the health scientists, Gemini has been doing some amazing stuff. They've got like 90% on a range of different benchmarks. It's pretty crazy. So, I mean, considering OpenAI have usually been ahead of everyone um, and considering that these dates are fairly recent, considering that these have been updated and some of these look like future dates. I'm not saying that they're, they're publication dates or anything like that, but considering that these are around, you know, a couple months from now, like two months from now, we can see that this one is in October the 29th. So I'm not entirely sure what this is, but I mean, if we just try to deduce what this could be, I think it could be a range of new agents that OpenAI is working on. But then again, pure speculation. And I do think that this stuff is going to come anyways, if not from OpenAI, definitely from Google, because they've been working on that stuff. But of course, you know, OpenAI is a bit more secretive, but this is definitely something that I wanted to show you guys, because I do think that this stuff, and I do apologize for talking about this for so long, but I do think that this stuff is definitely, you know, coming. And this is probably what OpenAI has been working on. They're probably, they're, they're honestly working on a lot of stuff. Now, something that uh, most people did miss as well is that Luma Dream Machine 1.5 is the new text video model that is going to be launching next week. Okay. So there have been some example some people have been you know showing you what's been done the reason you know people like luma dream machine is because this is a model that is free for the most part you know it's a lot cheaper than other models and what luma dream machine actually allows you to do that you know most other ones don't is that they allow you to have you know a start image and then an end image so you actually do get a lot more controllability there and luma actually managed to roll this out before a lot of other companies rolled out there so this is going to be something that once again it you know changes the space because when you have models that are really cheap and really you know near near free in a sense we will actually start to see an explosion of this kind of content around now whether or not you think that ai is good or whether or not you think that ai is bad i do think that ai is coming but that is going to be something that most people you know are going to have to deal with as there's no point you know rejecting technology it is something that is going to be here to stay now some pretty big news and this is really what i wanted to talk about you know four hours ago there was a new arc agi high score of 46 percent if you remember this is actually the benchmark that you do want to track if you actually want to track where you know frontier models are in terms of their reasoning and that is because the arc agi benchmark is one that doesn't measure intelligence the way that traditional benchmarks do what the arch benchmark does with its 85 percent score that is the human baseline and what that tries to actually do is it tries to actually measure actually measure how you can reason about problems that you don't know and i know that might sound a little bit foolish but i'm gonna explain a little bit more but essentially this is an article from big think that they did with francis cholet this is the person that invented the benchmark and basically he's talking about how you know llms are trained on massive troves of text mostly pulled from the internet so it's likely that you know the same questions are being used 
to evaluate a model and were included in the training data. This is essentially what we call contamination. When, you know, think about it like this. If you're going to train a model based on all of the text on the internet, trying to get a completely new question uh, is going to be pretty difficult considering, you know, the range of questions that exist in the current benchmark. So um, you can see right here, it says at best, this is, you know, tipping the scales and at worst, it's allowing them to simply regurgitate answers than rather performing any sort of human like reasoning, which is based on stuff that you completely haven't seen before. Like imagine taking a test and you've already seen seen the answers like you know it's not taking the test it's just pure memorization you can see and because ai developers typically don't really release details on their training data you know to those outside the companies the people trying to prepare for the imminent arrival of agi don't know if this is like i said already data contamination or this is affecting results okay um there are some you know research results that do state that you know um these benchmarks fall dramatically when you know slightly reworded or you know they're entirely after the cutoff date of the training data. So that is an issue, you know, in some cases. And, you know, Francis Soleil currently, you know, this is his belief. He says that, you know, all, you know, current AI benchmarks can be solved purely via memorization. Memorization is useful, but intelligence is something else. And in the words of Jean, I honestly don't know how to say his surname, apologies. Didn't want to completely butcher it. He says that kind of intelligence is what you do when you don't know what to do. It's how you learn in the face of new circumstances, how you improve and adapt and how you pick up new skills. And of course, this is the kind of reasoning that we want to see. And of course, this is where you can see in 2019, Cholet published a paper in which he describes deceptively simple benchmark for evaluating AIs. And this is the abstraction and reasoning corpus, which is the ARC benchmark. And of course, you can see here, okay, by June 2024, this is where we get to the juicy bit, okay? So by June 2024, that had increased to 34%, okay? And initially, the best AIs could only solve 20% of our tasks. But, you know, by June 2024, okay, this is only two months ago or, you know, a month and a half ago you know that was at 34 percent which is short of the 84 percent but this is what i'm saying okay when they wrote this article you know like a few days ago they were like okay this is only currently at 34 percent but today we've got to jump up to 46 percent okay and you can see here and the reason i'm talking about this is because once this benchmark does get to around 85 percent that means that you know whatever method is going to be used that, that method is most likely going to be, you know, scaled up on top of, you know, existing LLMs and then used to uh, reason. Basically, what this does is it like it, it focuses, you know, these current models away from just scale and compute, which has been previously how we've managed to, you know, gain, you know, ground on, you know, current benchmarks. But what this tries to focus on is, you know, your reasoning techniques, you know, for example, things like chain of thought, things like neurosymbolic AI, such as tool use and things like that. So you can see right here, he basically says that open AI basically set us back progress to AGI by five to 10 years. And the reason he says that is because, you know, like focusing on LLMs, like LLMs is a dead end. That's basically what he's saying. You can see is the purpose of the ARC prize is to redirect more AI research focus towards architectures that might lead us towards AGI, which is, you know, essentially what we want to do. And of course he says right here that LLMs have essentially sucked the oxygen out of the room. Everyone is doing LLMs. And of course, you know, LLMs is not going to lead to AGI, but I do think that, you know, LLMs are still an important part of AGI. Like I still think it's important, you know, a uh, part of the entire thing. But this is something that I think is really important because a jump up from, you know, like, 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 I do think this is important because a jump up is insane, especially on this benchmark. And this is something that anyone can really do. And I will be intrigued to see if, you know, public companies are going to be trying to, you know, beat these benchmarks, you know, companies like OpenAI, companies like Google. I do want to see if they can, you know, crush these benchmarks. And you can see here that it says leading AGI research lab at DeepMind is implementing nearly identical techniques we're seeing at the top of arc prize leaderboards which is test time fine tuning and blast inference and search so of course alpha proof which was you know closed source and basically what they're saying here is that you know in contrast natural language based approach can hallucinate plausible but incorrect intermediate reasoning steps and solutions despite having access to orders of magnitude more data we establish a bridge between these and this was essentially the Mathematic Olympiad thing where Google managed to get a silver model. And this is Google's alpha proof where they managed to get a silver medal at the Mathematical Olympiad. So that was remarkably impressive. But the point here is that they are using methods that are on the ARC prize leaderboard. It's not like they're looking at the ARC prize leaderboard and using those methods. The point is, is that they're using similar approaches. They're not looking at, you know, just scaling up LLMs, just throwing money at it. And the point that I'm trying to make here, guys, is that when you have you know, people actually looking in the direction, which is, it might not be test time fine tuning and it might not just be search, but those are things that we've already seen has led to super intelligence in other areas like AlphaGo. The point here is that this is actually like AGI coming through 
with you know a different level of reasoning and the point here is that like it's not just asking an llm chain a prompt this is a different way of thinking about the problem and this is really what's going to lead us to you know the vast majority of progress in the space now with that really important news and like i said before it, it didn't even get that much coverage but i think it's you know the right direction in terms of actually you know getting to agi francis soleil actually did you know say some stuff about this earlier this year but basically he does say that you know solving arc isn't equivalent to solving agi the first arc solver isn't going to be an agi but he's basically saying here that like until we solve arc we won't definitively have agi since ais cannot you know simply adapt to tasks they haven't seen before and basically solving this benchmark is going to you know figure out how to make systems actually adapt to on the fly novel tasks and this is going to be the major milestone on the way to agi so that's why this is so important now with all of this talk about agi and all of those things this brings me to something else that happened this week there was this agi day um, and this was an event where, you know, there were loads of AI speakers speaking about the future of AI, what they thought. And I wanted to address this video because there is a lot of, you know, debate going on right now about where the future of AI is and where things are currently headed. So there was a recent video, um, Gary Marcus spoke, and he said that, you know, he's presenting evidence that, you know, the scaling of AI capability has slowed and we haven't seen any significant improvement in AI since models since GPT-4 was trained in August of 2022. So um, I disagree with this and I'm going to explain why and why the future is about to get really crazy. But um, let's take a look at this, okay? They're all saying that there's room left for great improvements. Talk is cheap, but we haven't actually seen anything significantly better than GPT-4. When was GPT-4 actually trained as opposed to released? Turns out it was August of 2022. This has been well documented. They showed it to Bill Gates and kind of changed the world. Uh, but two years, we haven't really got much better. And so I'm going to show you a graph. I took the liberty of trying to extrapolate a curve because every day some AI influencer, AKA grifter, uh, I didn't say that out loud, I just thought it, um, shows you an exponential, or I mean, doesn't show you an exponential, they're all math enumerate, but they say every day, wow, I can't believe what came out this week, there's been exponential improvements, it's amazing. So I thought I'd actually plot a curve, I, I just did it by eye, I didn't do the math, but, um, Looking at Palm Chinchilla, which was the state of the art in August, uh, sorry, April 2022, um, and relative, this is to release dates uh, when GPT-4 came out. And you could genuinely make the argument that we saw exponential progress over that period. It was pretty amazing what happened. This is all since I spoke here three years ago. The, you know, there was a lot of progress, um, and you could argue GPT-4 was kind of an outlier, but there was a lot of progress uh, in the period leading up to GPT-4. But is it continuing? So this is where the curve should go. There's a little glitch with that that we can talk about. Um, but this is where the curve, roughly speaking, should go. But in reality, scaling has slowed. So here's the full curve of all the data. If you're a scientist, if you know Bayes' theorem, if you know how to aggregate data in whatever statistical technique you want, you can look at this. Each data point is a test of the hypothesis. Let's say that scaling would continue at the pace that it did from Palm Chinchilla to GPT-4. And it is obvious, you don't even need to run a statistic, but you could if you like. It is obvious that scaling has slowed, that we are not, in fact, still on that exponential region. Um, I'm not trying to be someone who's a doomer or someone that's trying to create any kind of debates, but I mean, there's simply one thing wrong with this entire graph is the fact that this is just simply basing this off, if you guys can see on the right-hand side here, the MMLU, the five shot. And I mean, like the thing is, is that as things improve, like for every percentage gain, there's not going to be like, you can't exponentially gain from 87% to 90%. Like no matter what you do, even if you get to hundred percent, like you could still argue that there isn't like a freaking, you know, exponential growth there. So I don't understand, you know, why Gary Marcus as intelligent as he is, has as many, you know, accomplishments that he has, why he kills still just has this kind of perspective to where, you know, almost any kind of, you know, AI update, he only focuses on the bad things. Like a lot of people who pay attention to AI updates, they say, oh, text video is amazing, but you know, the, it, it doesn't get the fingers right. Oh, it gets the fingers right, but it gets this wrong. It's like, you're just simply negating every other thing that it also does. Now, what I also want to state is that what we can also see here is that we can also see that yes, there was, you know, a huge jump from, you know, GPT 3.5 turbo to GPT 4. And, you know, the plotting of this is, you know, wrong because number one, when we actually look at the actual dates of when things were actually released, I don't know why the MMLU is even here, but this is wrong. For example, GPT 3.5, 
um, ChatGPT 3.5 was actually released late 2022. So that should actually be here. Um, and then of course, GPT-4 was released in March of 2022, which is no March 2023 which is of course here. So you could say, cool, there's an exponential. Now I'm not discounting other companies, but all of these other companies, these models, okay. Like, you know, just these are, first of all, of course, correctly, it does say open weight models here. Um, and I'm going to show you guys another video from a new interview from, you know, Demis Asab is talking about the future, but, um, you know, what we can see here is that these, you know, models like Gemini Ultra, Gemini 1.5 Pro, Llama 3, uh, Claude 3, these models like are, you know, a cycle behind. Okay. That's what you have to remember. Okay. Before the entire cycle, the only models that, you know, truly existed that were truly competitive was, you know, ChatGPT. There were, you know, levels ahead. And what you have to understand is that this makes sense. You can say scaling has slowed if we get the next iteration of Frontier models like Claude 3.5 Opus, Gemini 3. If we get those models and then we look and say, okay, there haven't been any new capabilities. You know, the reasoning is still off. You know, the hallucinations are still off. Then, yeah, you could say that. But right now, we still haven't got that next wave of AI yet because Claude 2, the Claude 2 systems were still around GPT gpt3 level and claude you know three levels were just on par with gpt4 level so i would say this isn't scaling a sode i would say that if we're mid 2025 and the benchmarks haven't you know gone up um and i don't think that the mml use a good benchmark anyways because if you know anything about this benchmark there's errors in this benchmark which means that 100 percent is technically impossible if there's currently errors in the questions so i think this benchmark isn't gonna be a thing anyways and right now claude 3.5 sonnet is currently the leader anyway so i mean once claude 3.5 opus gets here and other iterations of models i just think that you know staying things like scaling has slowed i mean it's it, it doesn't really make sense because if you've known anything, uh, if anything, you know, these companies are slowing down the releases. You know, we got GPT 3.5, then six months later, we got GPT 4. I mean, you know, considering the fact that also we're now actually scaling up these systems in terms of, you know, hardware, in terms of the GPUs, you have to really think about, okay, there's going to be a longer time frame between these next iteration of models. And what we actually have seen is that, you know, yes, models are converging around this point, but this is, you know, all models converging around the current point at their current size to reference. And we've seen models get a lot more efficient. We've seen them get a lot faster. We've seen them get cheaper. We've seen context windows expand. We've seen, you know, reasoning increases. We've seen so many different things. So, I mean, you know, negating all of that, saying scaling has sold, saying that, you know, it's an AI winter, saying the AI hype is dying down. I would just say always, you know, pay attention to the data because stuff like this is absolutely incredible. And I mean, when you actually think about it, if we actually look at the time period from GPT 3.5, which is late 2022 to where we are now, guys, Guys, that is literally late 2022 to where we are now. The guys, it's not even that's not even two years. It's not even two complete years. And people are saying scaling has slowed. Like, look back to when ChatGPT was released to where we are now, the state of the AI space. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. So, I mean, saying that scaling has slowed is uh, you know, it's 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 an incredible statement. But, anyways, there was also something I wanted to show you as well, which is really important. And this actually refers to what we discussed just a moment ago, but take a listen to Demis Sabis. I think that's the next era. Uh, these sort of more agent-based systems, we would call them, or agentic systems that um have agent-like behavior. Um, but of course, that's what we're expert in. That's what we used to build with all our game agents, AlphaGo and all of the other things we've talked in about in the past. So a lot of what we're doing is bringing to kind of marrying that work uh, that we're sort of, I guess, famous for. And then uh, with the new large uh, multimodal models. And I think that's going to be, you, uh, you know, the next generation of systems. You can think of it as combining AlphaGo with Gemini. Yeah, because I guess AlphaGo was very, very good at planning. Yes, it was very good at planning. Of course, only in the domain, though, of games. And so we need to sort of generalize that uh, into, the, you know, the, the general domain of everyday uh, workloads and language. In two, three, four years time, especially when you start getting agent-like systems or agentic behaviors, um, then I think... Uh, you know, if it's something's misused by someone or perhaps even a rogue nation state, uh, there could be serious harm. Alpha Go and, and those kind of, of things, those things are going to be some of the most important areas. And what we've already seen, which is why I said this is really important news, is that the way how, you know, Google's, you know, changing their approach to, you know, now focusing on those, you know, other systems that are getting them to really incredible benchmarks, like, you know, getting the Olympiad to, you know, silver medal, which is something that they didn't even think would happen. Like many people predicting, they were like, okay, that's going to be in 2026 at least to get like a bronze medal or whatnot. And it's like a silver medal in 2024. They're like, yo, this is crazy. Um, so them stating that, okay, we're now going to move to these methods. And these are the methods that are, you know, moving on the Arc AGI benchmark. It kind of leads me to believe that if this is what information is publicly available and considering the fact that OpenAI have, you know, historically been, you know, one to two years ahead of where the general consensus is of AI capabilities, it kind of leads me to believe that AGI is probably just around the corner. And there's also this one last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with, which is why I do think AI capabilities are probably still 
um, in terms of, you know, getting to AGI is probably still within a relative time frame. And when I mean weak AGI, I don't mean like a complete AGI that can then develop super intelligence. I mean like an AGI that's going to be rather effective, I think probably within the next two years. And the reason I say that is because when we actually look at OpenAI's future and the thing that they've said here, they've actually said that like, if you look at this, this isn't actually an AGI chart. It just, it, it this, like when I first looked at this, this is like, you know, I didn't really take it in because this is just stages of artificial intelligence. This isn't a, like AGI. Like when we actually take into account what this is this is okay level one chatbots this is two reasons number three is agents number four is innovators and number five is organizations when you actually really think about what's going on is on here you could argue that level five you know that's going to be like agi plus or near like asi level i mean you know an a AGI system that can literally, you know, do the work on an entire organization. I mean, if you think about what Apple and these companies are doing, they've created trillions of dollars in value, like millions and millions and billions of dollars. If you think about, you know, being able to have an AI system that can literally do the work of an organization as big as Microsoft, that's a huge level. Okay. Um, and if you think about innovators, the AI that can aid an in invention, this is like AGI slash ASI, okay? And if you think the fact that, okay, let's now plot this, you know, the fact that, okay, arguably OpenAI is at this level, they basically recently kind of confirmed that they were at this level. I mean, you would say that, you know, getting to agent system, systems that can take actions, considering the fact that we've discussed that this can be solved, you know, um, solving actions can be solved with scale, that I don't think it's going to take two whole years to get to this level. So, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think that, you know, when we talk about, you know, AI that can, you know, aid in invention, that's like, strong AGI slash bordering on ASI. And this is definitely really strong AGI slash ASI that can do inventions and then agents that can take actions. This is just going to be, you know, AGI with, you know, really good long-term planning. So the reason is here is probably going to be weak AGI, which is not far away what we're from. So, I mean, it's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens in the future, but I do not think this space is slowing down by any means necessary. If anything, I would say things are speeding up. The only problem here is that like a lot of companies are now private with what they're doing. So I think that, you know, with these levels and stuff like that, I do wonder um, if we're going to get, you know, notices and that stuff because we're dealing with really powerful technology here. But let me know what you guys think about this. What do you think the most, you know, important piece of AI news is? Um, I'm going to be doing another video later. So, you know, subscribe for that. And if you did enjoy the video, I'll see you in the next one.